Hi guys, welcome back. We're continuing, like my little hand waving hi all the time. Isn't that great? Hi. So anyway, I miss you guys and I hope that these videos will help prepare you for the final. And um, if you have any questions, you can call me or email me. Um, but hopefully Mr. Anderson and I will provide enough instruction for you guys to be ready for this final. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, this final will be um, pretty much a, a guide for what your final will look like. So for example, in your final, here's our review sheet, right? So in your final, you will have similar, the, the variable might be changed to say a, an A, and the numbers might be changed, but this will be a good guide, this whole review sheet for you to study. Here in California, by the way, it's really windy, I'm gonna show you. So here's my little setup I have here on the at the dining room table. I have a little tripod and then I perch it up there and then I sh shoot my camera down there to videotape. Let's see, so here's my little view. And if I walk around, it doesn't look too windy there. But if I come over here, you can see how windy it is. Isn't that beautiful wind? Isn't that beautiful? You can see the palm trees, Southern California. So we have palm trees, but my goodness, it only wind is windy like this, like three or four times out of the year, my dad said. I want to also show you this beautiful view from the front yard. Oh man, you can't even see the mountains anymore. I'll show you another day. Wow. It's cold up there. But yeah, see how windy it is? Look at that. Whoa. And I can feel the rain. It's raining. That's God's power right there. This beautiful wind. Yep. Anyway, back to math. Wow, I just realized I took two minutes talking. Sorry about that. So anyway, so let's look at number 19. That's where we left off. Let me get some good lighting here so it's nice and bright. And I think I already explained that problem. I can't even remember if I explained the problem. Well, maybe I didn't, I don't know. Anyway, so number 19 is a multiplication problem. The parentheses, I think I already did. Anyway, the parentheses will signify multiplication. So you will take, I'm sorry if I already explained this, I can't remember, so I'm just gonna do it again, I guess. The variable here is the same, so you'll keep the base, and then you add the exponents. Two plus six is eight, eight plus two is 10, c to the 10th power. I had messed up before, maybe I haven't explained it yet. So anyway, yeah, so when you're multiplying variables with an exponent, you will keep the base. You don't add the bases, you don't multiply the bases to get like three c's. You will keep the base, because they are all like terms, but you will add the exponents. Number 20, I have a correction, I messed up there. So I'm gonna get my black pen if I have one. And this should actually read b to the eighth power divided by a lowercase b to the fifth power. Sorry about that. I don't know how that turned into an uppercase, my bad. So again, just like we learned um, y to the zero power is one and the reason for that right here, when you divide the numerator and the denominator, it, you keep the base nine to the power on the numerator minus the power on the denominator, see that? Well, same concept right here. So this can be translated as B, keep the base to the eight minus five. Okay, you can write it like that and then you get b to the third power. That's the answer. You can also look at it, um, just eight minus five is three, and you're moving upward. So I'm gonna change that to the b to the third power. It's like saying b to the fifth goes into b to the eighth, b to the third times, and b to the fifth turns into one. So do it any way that works for you. Another great way 
when you're starting out learning exponents and variables, we have b to the eighth power. You're gonna just write it um, in repeated multiplication eight times. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, divided by b to the fifth. One, two, three, four, and five. And be very careful, because now you can start canceling them out. So cancel that out. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. And you're left with b to the third power on top. Number 21, negative four times four. So multiplication, we know that by the parentheses here, and we have negative four times four. And when you multiply a negative times a positive, you get a negative, and four times four is 16. Oops, I forgot to use my red pen, what am I doing? Anyway, two times negative 16. Again, parentheses mean, parentheses mean multiplication, and 16 times two is 32. We have a negative and a positive, and a negative times a positive, because there's an imaginary plus sign here, is a negative. The car next door's alarm's going off. Anyway, 12 times two is 24. We're gonna just move left to right for order of operation. 12 times two is 24. So I'll write that here. And then times negative one, a negative times a positive is a negative, and 24 times one is 24, okay? Number 24, 99 divided by 11. Again, just like multiplication, when you divide a negative divided by a positive, you're gonna get a negative. And 11 goes into 99, how many times? Nine times, so 99 divided by 11 is nine for negative nine. 25, negative five minus 10. Let's just solve the numerator spot first. So we have a negative five minus 10. So let's just draw a number line for those of you who, I mean, I always feel for you guys because in seventh grade, um, this stuff was not always, didn't always come easy to me. So that's why I don't ever take for granted that it's just an easy problem. I look at it now and I say, oh, easy, but I sure, I sure didn't when I was your age. So let's look at the number line and let's start with our first number here, number five, okay? So let's go back five spaces, one, two, three, four, five. That lands us there on negative five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we subtract 10. So we gotta go 10 more spaces in the negative direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that lands us at negative 15. So our new problem is negative 15 in the numerator spot and 15 in the denominator spot. And we know that anything um, divided by itself is one, right? Because those can cancel, but we still have this negative and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So negative one. For number 26 and 27 on your sheet, I'm hoping Mr. Anderson let you know to put these symbols in. I told him, but I don't know if he let you know. So if they're blank right here, you'll put a multiplication sign there and a division sign here. And you wanna move from left to right. I'm gonna bring in my paper here to simplify the problem. Again, order of operations, move left to right. So 100 times two, negative 100 times two is negative 200. A negative times a positive is a negative. And then let's finish our problem, divided by a positive 10. So 200, negative 200 um, divided by 10 is 20, okay? So to figure that out, again, you guys can just come over here and do that, and then you'll get 20. Okay, another little trick is when you multiply 20 times 10, two times one is two, and then you just count your zeros, 200, and then you get 200, check, check. Hopefully I'm not, uh, anyway, so let's continue. So negative 200 divided by 10 is 20. You have a negative and a positive, and a negative divided by a positive gives you a negative. Okay, so the answer is negative 20. Number 27. Again, moving, um, well, uh, let me just 
slow down right there. The reason I move left to right, I didn't state it, is that remember PEMDAS, that's the acronym for, um, I forgot what it is now, um, something about Aunt Sally, uh, anyway, oh no, no, okay, anyway, so, anyway, um, but I know what PEMDAS stands for mathematically, I just forgot that Aunt Sally acronym, anyway, so parentheses is P, exponent is E, multiplication and division, they carry the same weight, moving left to right, and addition and subtraction is last, okay? So when you move left to right, the reason I can, I start with this, again, multiplication and division carry the same weight. So you have to start left to right. Now if division was here and multiplication was here, you would divide these two first. Okay, and you're actually gonna get a different answer because 100 divided by two is 50, negative 50, and 50 divided by 10 is five. So the answer is gonna be uh, 50 divided by uh, five. So it's gonna be 50. So that's why it's very important to move um, left to right. Remember that when you have a multiplication and a division, don't multiply first or don't divide first you need to start on the left hand side I'm probably just um, talking too long but anyway uh, so remember PEMDAS okay parentheses I'm sorry uh, yeah parentheses exponents uh, multiplication division addition subtraction okay I'll move on so now we have another order of operation problem and we need to make sure to uh, do what's first. So any parent, you know, any parentheses, anything, any, um, when I'm talking about parentheses, it would be like, say if 15 or five and three were in parentheses, you do that first. Um, there's no parentheses. So let's try to find exponents. No exponents. How about multiplication and division? Yes, there are one. There's two actually. There's division here and multiplication here. So which one are we going to do first? We are going to do division first. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna, I like to rewrite my problem. So five plus three, boy, can you guys hear that wind? Okay, so five plus three minus, I'm gonna scratch that out. Here's our division problem. 15 divided by five is three. So I need to substitute that with a three. And then you just keep the sign here. So that's why my negative's there. And then minus two, times eight. Now I look at my problem, I have this multiplication problem. So I'm gonna write this out again, because you all know me, I like to keep everything in order. Two times eight is 16, minus 16. And now we can move left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter at this point with addition and subtraction, annoying horn. Five plus three is eight. Eight minus three is five. I'll just write it out. Eight minus three minus 16. Boy, that's an annoying horn. Eight minus three is, I'm just gonna move it over here, is five minus 16, and that gives me a negative 11 as my answer. Find the average of the following numbers, number 28. So you're just gonna add these up very carefully. I'm gonna write them out. Okay, I had to wait for that horn to stop blaring because it was annoying me. So I went ahead and added these. So after adding these all very carefully, I got eight, 1,860. After you add all these numbers together, okay, you count the quantity, one or how many you have. One, two, three, four, five. So then you're gonna divide your sum of all these numbers by that number, one, two, three, four, five. And once you do the division, it comes out to, I already did it, 372 evenly. And so what that means is 372 is the average between all of these numbers. Number 71, um, because I have not gone over calculating tax with you yet, I will go ahead and make this an extra credit problem. But I wanted to talk about calculating tax. Now, you guys are also savvy that you guys have a cell phones. Some of you, you have, some of you have your own bank card. Oh my stars, there's that horn again. Hold on. Okay, I was about to throw a rock at that car. 
next door. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. Okay, so number 71 is going to be an extra credit problem because I have not taught this yet. So, um, but tell me in your own words how to calculate tax. Now, I was trying to say that some of you have, you know, bank cards even, you have your own bank account, and you've gone and I'm sure purchased, let's just say you purchased, um, I don't know, a camera, you purchased, uh, you know, a trash can for your room, um, I don't know, a, 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 a necklace for your mom for Mother's Day, I don't know, I'm just thinking of random things. And when you go and purchase something, there's something that they tack onto your total, like the and and it's called the tax. Okay, it's called tax. And in every state, the tax is different. So all I need for you guys to write that right in that spot for extra credit is basically to calculate tax, you times the tax amount times your the cost of your item, okay? But what's different in tax is that, say they list your tax at, let's just say it's 8%, like in California, where I'm at right now, tax is really high here. So 8% for your necklace that you bought for mom for Mother's Day. <clears throat> and so, and the, say, let's say the necklace is $20. Okay, and you have a tax rate of 8%. Remember how to write that 8% as a decimal? You find your whole number of your percent and you move it back two spots to make a decimal of 0 0.08. So that's how you will calculate tax. Okay, and that's how you calculate. You take the cost of your item and times it by the tax rate as a decimal. So I wrote multiply cost of item by tax rate as a decimal. I also wrote add tax amount to cost of item. And you guys can really put anything there that your mind tells you of how to calculate tax and I will I will um, probably accept your answer. Again, number 71 is going to be extra credit. Hold on. Okay, so I think we're all done with 71. I keep getting interrupted by calls and stuff, so I can't remember where I was at necessarily. But uh, let's look at number 72. Jessica buys a new pair of boots that cost $55. The tax rate is 7%. How much did Jessica pay for the boots in total? Hopefully I gave you, again, this will be extra credit because I haven't taught on tax yet, but I'm kind of teaching now, so you have a chance to get these answers correct. Um, so let's take a look. The cost of the boots is $55. So you'll go ahead and write the cost of the boots out. And then the tax rate is 7%. And how do you write 7% as a decimal? You find your whole number um, or where the decimal would be on a whole number. It would be after the 7. And you'll move two spaces to the left to give you 0 .07. You will go ahead and multiply that out. So let's go ahead and take this handy dandy calculator and see um, if that's true. So we'll take the cost of the boots, $55, decimal zero, zero, and times that times 0 0.07, which equals 7%, 0 0.07 equals $3.85 added to the cost of the boots. So $55 plus $3.85 gives us $58.85. Again, this one will be extra credit because I have not taught on calculating tax yet, but you can certainly get an extra point on your test for every extra credit problem you get right. What is the distance formula, number 73? So distance equals rate times time. Now go ahead and just memorize that formula for the rest of your life when you're doing word problems that include distance, miles, rate and time okay and number 72 we have a distance um, a word problem it says Jenny was traveling on a train she traveled 840 miles in four hours 
what was her speed? So I always like to circle our important information, okay? For this one, you can have fun with and you can draw a picture to kind of visualize it. And then what was her, what was her speed? Now basically this becomes a substitution problem, okay? So 840 miles is what? Distance or rate or time? It's the distance, right? 840 miles talks about how far she traveled. So that's where our 840 will go. And then the rate and then the time. So four hours, is that the rate or is that the time? It's the time, right? Four hours gives us the time, goes here. And then our rate is what was her speed? So what was her rate of speed? And that's our unknown. So we'll just go ahead and leave that as R. You can change this to 4R, but this still signifies R times 4. And to, to get R by itself, you'll want to divide by 4 on both sides to get R isolated all by itself. So it's going to look like this. R equals 840 divided by 4 is 210. I used my handy dandy calculator to figure that out. Ta -da. And so we'll go ahead and fill that in, 210. So her rate of speed was 210 miles per hour. Okay, now 73, oh wow, I just realized those are numbered wrong, <laughs> sorry. So you have 72, 73, 72, 73. You guys got extra problems. I will fix that for the final, I'm sorry.